the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today's meditation is taken from the ones noted on the screen before you from St. Mark and from Romans and some other texts. In the name of Jesus Christ, your people of God. Today, God's people celebrate the 501st anniversary of the Reformation, begun when Martin Luther nailed his 95 Theses to the church door in Wittenberg. Luther did many things, but he is noted for saying and writing many quotable things. Perhaps the most famous and the most understood of his quotes is this, sin boldly. Now, how would you like that for an outreach slogan? Come and join resurrection because we sin boldly. Well, that is grossly misunderstood. And, by the way, if you attend Bible class this morning, we'll explain to you what Luther was talking about. But another of his well-known quotes is part of the title of this sermon. Simul justus et peccator simultaneously a saint and a sinner. Think about that. Simultaneously, both a saint and a sinner. When Adam and Eve first sinned, they died spiritually to God. And that death left them with a very different nature, a sinful nature. Ever since all of their descendants are born no longer in the likeness of God who created us and made us, but rather in the likeness of sinful Adam and Eve. And not only are all of us conceived in sin and born with that nature infecting us spiritually, but it also lives in our bodies. That's the problem Jesus revealed to Nicodemus when he sought out the Lord. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And the truth is, our situation is impossible for us to change. That's why Jesus told his disciples a little later, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. God did the impossible when he became one of us. Not only the miracle of the incarnation, but God actually dying on a cross. And those possibles are made even more remarkable in that God would do this for his sinful creatures. He died for us, we who had made ourselves enemies of God. And then God worked still another impossible. He gave to us freely. We who were dead in sin, Jesus gave to us the life he earned. Now we are reborn spiritually through water and the word. Through these means, people are gifted with faith that apprehends God in Jesus the Savior. No wonder St. Paul wrote, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. However, brothers and sisters, there's another part of us that is yet to be regenerated. And that is our flesh. While God regenerates us spiritually through baptism and his word, our flesh remains utterly infected with sin. We are saint and sinner simultaneously, as Luther said. St. Paul reminds us, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. And in today's epistle lesson, Paul goes on to say, For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being, but I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then... I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. You and I and all Christians are both saints and sinners. We, we live a life of struggle and warfare just as Paul spoke about in Romans. 
the nature of that new person in Christ is to do good, to think well, to use our mouths as an instrument of blessing. But there is in each of us a part of us that is capable only of sin, and by that old nature in us, we sin in our actions and inactions, and we delight in our sinful thoughts and words. It's our flesh that's selfish and self-centered. Thanks be to God, we are fully and completely forgiven in Christ Jesus. For our Savior took upon himself all of our sins, suffered and died for them on the cross, and rose to the new life that he has freely given to us. However, we must still cope with the consequences of our sinful flesh in all of its manifestations. And let's be honest, that has an impact on our stewardship of giving and living. Martin Luther was very perceptive when he said concerning our stewardship of treasures, oops, if I can get the right thing there, he said people go through three conversions, their head, their heart, and their pocketbook. Unfortunately, not all at the same time. That brings us to the gospel lesson for today, the very familiar story of the widow's mites. I am fully aware that in the past I have butchered this text by making it a legalistic harangue on giving. Give till it hurts. Give till it feels good. Give till your conscience is satisfied. And on and on. But that's not the point of this biblical story. The point is the widow's trust in God above all else. She had two small copper coin. She could have easily kept one, but she exhibited her trust in the Lord by giving all she had. But even more, she serves an example of what Jesus himself came to do. Jesus chose to give up his whole life, laying aside his divine powers to become incarnate, God taking on flesh so he could defeat our great enemies of sin, death, devil and hell. And all of this is given to us by God's grace, a free gift. We cannot help or cooperate in any way. Now as Jesus sits in the temple preaching the kingdom of God that that kingdom has now arrived, the widow comes along and gives up her whole living and places herself in God's hands. That is in a subtle way a parable of our Savior's own sacrifice. And this story is shared for a reason. Before any monetary gift of ours has any significance, the remembrance of God's gift of love wrapped up in our Savior Jesus should always come first. Christian stewardship seeks to help God's people connect Christ's sacrificial love with our daily faith-filled decisions, including our financial offerings to the Lord for his kingdom work. Our gifts to the Lord are, are not a bribe. We're not bribing God, but they are a debt. We give generously, not because God needs our money, our possession, but because we need to give. We need to show that it is God who rules our hearts, our minds, yes, even our pocketbooks. We're not ruled by greed, materialism, self-centeredness, or trying to keep up with the Joneses. Our stewardship is a measure of our faith and trust in the Lord and his sure promises of mercy, grace, forgiveness, and care. The late great Billy, the late great evangelist, Billy Graham, once made this insightful observation. He said, a checkbook is a theological document. It will tell you who and what what you worship. And I would add to that, our credit cards do the same thing. It is so easy to let money and possessions become our God. That's one of the reasons that Jesus talked about money more than any other topic. Only the true God, the God who makes himself known to us in his Son, Jesus Christ, through the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and lives, should be our God. 
So I encourage you today to be generous in your financial offerings to the Lord, to let God be God even of our pocketbooks. If possible, I challenge you to grow another step in giving, even if, even if it's only a percentage or even a half percentage. But I do want you to know this. I want you to know that your giving makes a difference. Because of you, the gospel, the good news of the Savior Jesus continues to be proclaimed in, from, and through this place, this place we call resurrection, in a multitude of ways. Through Sunday school, adult Bible education, vacation Bible school, and confirmation. By preaching, by the celebration of the sacraments, through our Thanksgiving baskets, the port ministry to the homeless and hungry. Our youth groups, our support for our Christian school and child care, hospital and shut-in visitations, worldwide mission efforts, necessary items for the altar and worship, our blood drives, our prayer shawl ministry, help for hurting people on the peninsula, streaming our services through the Internet, maintaining the Lord's house, and the list goes on and on one of the things that I really love about resurrection is the willingness, indeed the eagerness, to reach out and make a difference. By your caring and sharing, you are touching hearts, changing lives, and making a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. As verse 19 in 1 Timothy 6 says, you are taking hold of the life that is truly life. May God grant that in all of us. Amen.